All right, hello everybody. Good evening. We are ready to do some more Ace Attorney investigations. Um, last time we were investigating our our kidnapping, which which has now become a murder, because that butler, that deacon guy, was killed. Officer Meekins was was blamed as as the killer by and uh, so he's been arrested and so now we're still gonna try to track down the real murderer I don't know if we'll finish this tonight I hope so but there's still a ways to go in this chapter I think Chased out like a pair of peasants. Mr. Edgeworth. Yeah, we got introduced to Kay last time as well. Who claims to be the Yadagarasu. At least, at least the new one. The, the successor. Yes, Kay. There's something even thieves should never steal. Do you know what that is? You really shouldn't steal anything. However, I'll bite. What shouldn't a thief steal? A life. It's too heavy of a burden on your soul to get away with, ever. Wow, deep. That's something we can agree on. Well said, Kate. No matter what we may try, murder is the one crime that can never truly be hidden. As I intend to prove that, and I intend to prove that by my own hands. When I apprehend the murderer myself. All right, and I'm gonna work extra hard to be a good assistant. Let's go. I still never said she could be my assistant. Oh, I'm just gonna drop the issue. Yes, the prosecutor and the thief, quite the pairing. The first thing we should do is locate the real scene of the murder. Correct, because we established before that the deacon was killed somewhere else and the body was moved somehow. Mr. Edgeworth! Detective Gumshoe. Mr. Edgeworth, the stadium! Hurry, sir! This is supposed to be hush hush, but they found a witness at the stadium! A witness? You! What did we tell you about leaving your assigned post? Uh-oh. Yeah, because... Apparently Interpol has hijacked this... This investigation. They haven't quite told us why. Ah, the chick is up! Mr. Redger, remember, I'm always rooting for you, so go get him, sir! Detectives sure look like they're enjoying themselves. It's not all fun and games, Kay. Now then, let's head to the stadium and meet this witness. Huh, and I already see another one of those, uh, one of those badger mobiles. I thought there was a witness here. Yeah, I don't see anyone. Mr. Edgeworth. Huh? Oh, it's Emma! Long time no see! You're Miss Emma Sky, right? Yep. This girl is the younger sister of my former superior, Lana Sky. Two years ago, we stood in the same courtroom together as witness and prosecutor. But I thought she had gone to Europe to study forensics. I can't believe you remember me, Mr. Edgeworth. 
course I do. How have you been? You look to be in good spirits. Are you still studying abroad? You bet. More than anything, I want to investigate crime scenes scientifically. I've been studying non-stop every day to become a top-notch forensic scientist. But it's spring break now, so I thought I'd come back for a bit. I see. I almost didn't recognize you. You've really grown these past few years. Please don't tease me, Mr. Edgeworth. I know I still have a long way to go. But I'm gonna be a super forensic scientist someday, you'll see. You seem to know Mr. Edgeworth really well. Are you two acquaintances? Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Emma Sky. Nice to meet you. I'm studying abroad now to be a forensic scientist. How about you? Wow, that's a great dream. My name's Kay Faraday. And I'm trying to become an unstoppable great thief. Again. A great thief. Again, not something I would recommend bragging about to... to a, a forensic scientist. Don't think too hard on them. It's not worth the trouble. In any case, we have much to catch up on. You bet we do. So why are you here, Emma? Well, I just happened to decide to come back home for spring break. Then I'd heard that you'd come back too, so I raced on over here. I really wanted to welcome you back at the airport, but I just missed you. Then how exactly did you know I was here? Through the power of science, naturally. Never underestimate what science can do for you. I used these to track your footprints, and I followed them straight to you. <laughs> this set is the greatest. It's so wonderfully scientific. You spray this chemical on the ground, and when you shine the special light on it... Zing! The footprints... The footprints light up like an electrified noble glass in a glass tube. Really? Hmm. It's almost like magic, scientifically speaking. We might be able to use that to track the killer. Forensic scientists, science has never seemed more ominous to me than this very moment. Em, I'd like to ask you about what you witnessed. Huh? What are you talking about? Are you not the witness Detective Gumshoe told us about? Well, I did get a call from Detective Gumshoe earlier. He was practically yelling at me. Mr. Edgeworth needs your scientific doohickeys right now, pal, he said. What was that man thinking? Or rather, not thinking. So let me guess, there's been a burner, right? Yes, unfortunately. There's a sudden glint in her eyes. But I need to keep my mind focused on the witness. Now, where did that person go? I assume this is another Badger mobile. Yeah, but it's a different color than the Blue Badger's car. No shit, Sherlock. Yes, this is the Retina Searing Pink model. Set off in the distance. Oh, another badger. Oh, hey, it's the pink badger. Badger, get. Badger, 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 badger. Just what does she see in these silly things? Badger has something to say to you, Mr. Edgeworth. Are you by chance the witness I've been searching for? Sorry, but I don't speak Badger dance.
Oh no, it's you. Oh no, not her again. <laughs> oh no. It's old bag. <laughs> I can't take me inside that stuffy head anymore. You're... No, why her? Why here? Why now? I first met this woman three years ago. She was a witness in one of my cases. She's since gone out of her way to pop up unexpectedly and caused me great grief. Edgy Poo! Why don't you understand what I was saying? Was, I was trying to tell you! I mean, really. I was trying so hard to keep the kids' dreams alive by staying in character. But you couldn't pick up on what I was trying to convey to you. I'm sick and tired of that roundabout way of talking, so I'm just going to be direct. I had a bad feeling before, but this just made it official. Today has gone beyond the typical not-my-day to the realm of waking nightmare. <laughs> so you're a friend of Mr. Edgera, too, Ms. Pink Badger. Um, not quite. You could say that, but right now I'm just the Pink Badger, dearie. She may look the part, but I know better than to trust my eyes around this woman. My name is Wendy Old Bag. But you can call me Wendy, or Granny, or whatever suits your fancy. Nice to meet you, Miss Old Bag. I'm Kay Faraday. <laughs> what do I care about a young whippersnapper like you? I was just trying to be polite. Hmm. Well, let's get this over with. Weren't you a security guard at one of the Gatewater hotels the last time we met? Hm. I go where I'm needed. I'm very good at what I do, unlike the youth of today. I get called in all the time to fill in when there aren't enough hands. But enough about me, Edgy Poo. I'm thoroughly dejected right now. I finally get a chance to see you again, and here you are talking with two young girls. Haha, <laughs> jealous. Just the other day, I have it with my unit. Uh, no, sweet, you got arrangement here, and when you see her all, don't say you. You seem to attract all sorts of interesting people, Mr. Edgeworth. Kay, please, I'm begging you, by all means, do not provoke her any further. Aren't you forgetting about something, Mr. Edgeworth? This person could be the witness. Honestly, I hope she isn't, but I don't think fate is going to be so kind today. I saw what happened. I even saw the exact moment it happened. How's that? So it's true, she is the witness. Oh boy. I don't suppose I can afford to ignore the old bag. Yes, it was just a little while ago. I saw it happen right in front of me. The moment of the murder! You mean to say that you witnessed someone being killed right before your eyes? Sounds like a pretty important piece of testimony to me. I came to the stadium to take a short break. As I was resting, I happened to glance over and I saw two men facing each other in that area. Suddenly there was a loud gunshot and the person who was shot fell to the ground. It was a very terrifying experience, let me tell you. Looks like we hit the jackpot, huh, Mr. Edgeworth? Someone shot him right in front of you? Yes, I can't afford to ignore what she has to say. Unfortunately. Is that unfortunately you tacked on it at the end supposed to meet Edgy Poo? Well, anyway, let's see what we can find out from this little old lady. Hold it! Two men facing each other. You saw two men. Can you describe them for me? They look like your average Joes. Completely uninteresting and not worth fawning over. 
I'm telling you, they were so boring, I didn't even remember much beyond that. Did they have any special features? Anything you can recall would be very helpful. Oh my, don't tell me you're jealous of those two men. Hey, she's right, you do seem pretty worked up over them, Mr. Edgeworth. Well, I mean, yeah, because a description of them would be nice. I I'm not worked up over anyone, and I'm not jealous. It's all right, Edgy Poo. Those two are just fools compared to a stallion like you. I thought so little of them that I lost interest the, mo the instant I laid eyes on them. Suddenly there was a loud gunshot. Hold it. You're claiming to have seen the exact moment in which the murder took place. Absolutely, that gun made a terrible racket when it was fired. You didn't try to go help the person that got shot? I'm only one person, you smart alecky brat. What could I have done? But I took off as soon as I could to find someone who could help. Two men, one bullet. It's all consistent with what we found out from the body. Sadly, there wasn't exactly a lot of new information to go on in your testimony. Well, if I saw the guy again, I'm sure I could identify him for you. I mean, how do you expect me to remember anything without something to jog my memory? Self-centered, aren't we? While it was somewhat useful, her testimony also presents us with a new problem. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes? So about this new problem... What's that giant grin on your face for? You want me to show you something really nice? No, thank you. Uh... Where did your mind immediately go, Edgeworth? <laughs> Don't be so mean! I swear it's something you're gonna like! What's that gadget you're holding? What you see before you is the secret weapon of a great thief. Oh, I should have known it would be worthless. Ah, oh, don't be like that. <laughs> <clears throat> what the hell? What do you think now? What's it doing? It's projecting something into the air. I'm going to input the necessary information to run the simulation now. Once I'm done, I'll increase the size of the projection to its maximum size. Dark skies of evening, when no other bird dares take wing, one alone remains all-seeing. Now witness the true power of a real modern-day Robin Hood. What is this? This is a recreation of the murder based on the info I inputted into Little Thief. Little Thief? I dare say, I think you're taking the Robin Hood thing a bit too far. Little Thief is actually meant to be a simulator for me to plan my thefts. But I suppose if I used it like this... Let's see, Miss Oldbag said the two men were facing each other. And then a gunshot rang out and the victim fell to the ground. Ah, uh, so with this we can inspect the crime scene as it was in the past. See? So what do you think? I have to say I'm impressed by the technology thieves have access to these days. Well, it is the super-secret weapon of the mighty Yadagarasu. Indeed. Oh, but if there isn't something- there isn't enough information, or if something's out of place... The recreation could come out a little strange. In other words, I can use this to authenticate the, vil the validity of a witness's testimony. You got it! You really catch on quick, Mr. Edgeworth. Interesting. Right now, the simulation is a recreation of that witness's testimony. So for now, we should re-examine everything. If I find anything illogical or strange, I can then ask for clarification. Do you ever you examine anything in the simulation in the way you always do? You can even present evidence when you find a contradiction. And if you, and if you find something, I've got a little thief with me. So you just let me know, okay? 
Okay. According to the testimony, the victim fell to the ground here. That's right, but... But if that's the case, then we've already found our first contradiction. What? Where? If this is the real scene of the crime, there's something missing that should be here. The blood, right? Which piece of evidence shows the missing item? Contradiction. Is something wrong with my recreation? If this is the real scene of the crime, something specific should be here. If you think back, how did we deduce the other crime scene was not the real one? Oh, I get what's missing now. There's no blood on the ground here either, right? Right. In fact, there's no blood here cast doubt on the, on the witness's testimony. Edgy Pooh, how, how do you doubt me like that? Are you calling me a liar? I know what I saw, and I saw the victim get shot down. You know, I don't think she's lying, Mr. Edgeworth. To be honest, I can't think of a reason why she would lie to me. In that case, maybe there's another explanation for the distinct lack of blood. Was it because he was still in the, uh... If he was still wearing the costume? Is it not possible that the victim was wearing a costume? So you really think that Mr. Deacon was one of the kidnappers? I think we can reasonably assume there's a very good chance that he was. And that if he was shot while he was inside one of these stolen costumes, then Mr. Deacon's blood would be on the inside of the costume instead of on the ground. Precisely. Now, if only we could prove that the victim was wearing a costume. I think it would be pretty easy if we could find some footprints. The problem is finding them, since there doesn't seem to be any around. Oh, Emma! I think... I think she's got just the ticket for that. Footprints, huh? I wonder how we go about finding some of those. This is amazing! Just feel the power of science! Emma, about that method you were talking about for finding footprints. Ah, finally, my expert knowledge in forensics is needed. Yes, well, can you detect and trace even partial footprints? Leave it to me. My cutting-edge detection kit can find anything. Very well. If you would please analyze the footprints in this area. Okay, stand back now, and witness the power of science at work. something. Look, right there. I don't see anything. Oh, that's right. Here, put these special glasses on, Mr. Edgeworth. The, these footprints here were definitely left by a badger costume. Judging by the way the prints are layered, those seem to be the newest. Then we can conclude that the victim was definitely wearing a costume at the time. All right. Oh, 
Okay, in that case, I'll update Little Thief's simulation parameters. I can't wait to see what we find out from this new info. So the victim was wearing a costume when he died. And with that, we should be one step closer to the truth, right? We see the recreation has changed in accordance with the new information. We may be closer, but now something else has caught my attention. What do you want? Your testimony, naturally. I'd like to hear it one more time, if you please. she still doesn't remember what the killer looked like. I came to the stadium to take a short break. As I was resting, I happened to glance over and I saw two men facing each other in that area. Suddenly there was a loud gunshot and the person who was shot fell to the ground. It was a very terrifying experience, let me tell you. So, does this mean that Ms. Oldbag's testimony has a contradiction in it? Yeah, it was pretty much the same... Pretty much the exact same one she gave before. Yes, and I believe our best course of action is to compare it with your recreation. See, I just knew Little Thief would be of help. Now let's see if we can pull more info from Ms. Oldbag to put into the recreation. For that, we must first find the contradiction in her testimony. Take a short break. I glanced over and I saw two men facing each other in that area. Hold it! You saw two men. Can you describe them for me? Okay, it's th this is the same as before. Hmm. But if... If he was wearing a costume, how'd you know... Especially if both were costumes, how would you know they were men? Objection! Mm -hmm. Two men. How did you know the gender of the two people involved? Seeing as how the victim was wearing a costume at the time. Ah! Uh. Furthermore, I have another matter I'd like to inquire about. I'd very much like to know... Why do you fail to mention the costume in your testimony? That's right, she said there was nothing remarkable about them at all. You'd think the costumes would have stood out. I'm, be I'm beginning to doubt if you really witnessed the murder at all. But I'm telling you, I really did see it! I saw it with my very own eyes! From a seat in the second tier. The second tier? Hey, didn't you say you saw it right in front of you earlier? That was, uh, you know, I was using the phrase in the metaphorical sense. Oh, God. I see your witness still has a screw loose in the metaphorical sense. The cushy seats in the second tier reserved for hotshot VIPs. Which is exactly why I go there around again to take a nap. I can't see how you could have gotten a good look from up there. It's so high up. Were you able to see even the victim's costume from way up there? Well, I know I saw two people. But I couldn't really see what they looked like because they were in the, sh they were in the stage's shadow. Oh. My eyesight isn't what it used to be, you know. 
Not like when I was young. People used to call this is probably a good man from 100 miles away. Of course, they also knows me in a flash and tried to make a move. And there she goes again. Let's return to our investigation, shall we, Kay? You got it. Stage, huh? It looks like they broke the stage down. I guess this means they're done for the day. Or maybe it's because a different show is scheduled to start its run tomorrow. So... So that means the, the stage was bigger a while ago, right? Thus, thus it would have cast a bigger shadow. With that woman's testimony, if that woman's testimony is to be believed, the murder occurred before the stage was broken down. Do you want me to input that bit of info into Little Thief? Yes, if you please. Okay. that accidentally, but... Okay, this is... Okay, this little bit is interesting. We got a glitch in the matrix here. There's clearly a contradiction here. Please stop stealing my lines. Oh, come on, it wasn't that hard to see it coming, even for a layman like me. I suppose. In any case, it's not possible for the killer to have stood here in that way. Because there was a very real stage set up in the spot at that time. Yeesh, I told you I got it. You feel the need to explain everything. <laughs> you don't know Edgeworth very well, do you? Yes, well, in any case, we still need to resolve this unusual situation. Isn't it obvious? The killer was on top of the stage, naturally. On top. If we look at... That would actually line up with... With the entry and exit wounds that we found on him. Right, Ms. Oldbag? Yes, I remember now. The killer was standing on top of the stage. Now let me update the info in the simulation. Okay. Well, well, what have we here? A bunch of hooligans running amok, I see. Uh, he's back. But his late motif there is also pretty bumpin'. Agent Lang, how nice of you to join us. Well, I can't have you going around messing up my crime scenes. Agent Lang, we discovered that the real scene of the murder is here, in the stadium. I see. Thanks. For what? I'm just trying to show you my appreciation for all, for all the times you saved me. Who knew that such a strange little toy could recreate a crime scene like that? Little Thief is not a toy. You too. Sir! Oh, 
Oh, I saw the sign. That sign said Troop Grammary on it. Nice little, uh... Nice little reference back to Apollo Justice. And there you have it, you see? Big boys like me don't need silly toys, little girl. Huh. <sighs> now this is a recreation. So what, do you still intend to assert that Officer Meekins is the killer? Of course. Even knowing that the crime took place here doesn't let him off the hook. him again. This is the real scene of the crime. Officer Meekins lay in wait for the victim on top of the stage. And when the victim finally showed, he shot him from on high. That's the truth of your little, that your little recreation showed. How far will you go to accuse Officer Meekins of the crime? He's the most likely suspect we've got, especially given the situation with his gun. Even if he is the killer, at least my recreation was on the mark. You see? Thank you for understanding, my little crow girl. Ugh. I'm not some common crow. I'm the Yadagarasu, the Raven of Legend. Unfortunately, your conclusion has yet to be tested, so let's see how it holds up. This is the real scene of the crime. He can just lay and wait on top of the stage. Hold it! Laying in wait? How did Officer Meekins even know the victim was going to come here? simple. He was investigating the kidnappers, right? And while he was doing so, he came to understand the victim, Mr. Deacon's movements. Objection! <laughs> and why would the good officer want to ambush and kill a kidnapper? Not so fast. You mean his motive? Who knows and who cares? You can find out for yourself when you talk to him in jail. You have no respect for the order of law. Don't get me wrong, but I need more than there's no motive to convince me otherwise. He's right, the lack of a motive is a rather weak argument by itself. So the officer lay in wait on top of the stage. Finally showed he shot him from on high. Hold it! So you agree with how a recreation turned out? Like I said, I'm grateful that you were able to save me some, some time. Alright, but we still don't know why he chose to wait on top of the stage. Who cares? Maybe he wanted to become the Blue Badger. Who's to say he didn't see the stage and decided to put on a Badger stage show of his own? Or maybe there's a completely different reason. What does it matter? It still doesn't change the fact that Officer Meekins stood up on the stage and shot the victim on the ground below. Hold it! So you honestly believe that, that what you're saying is what really occurred? Hey, you're the ones who came up with this scenario. Are you saying you doubt yourselves? Ugh, touché. Unfortunately, Ancient Lang's conclusions don't contradict with our recreation. Hmm, then what does that mean? Then does that mean it, it all went down just as he says? No, not quite. I wonder if what we had recreated earlier was the whole truth. Oh, 
Oh, wait, no, it was the... No, it was the other way around. The entry wound was the abdomen. The, the shoulder was the exit wound. So it may have been... It might have been the other way around. Objection! I'm terribly sorry, Agent Lang. I should have warned you that our recreation is incomplete. You cut in quite unexpectedly, after all. What's that supposed to mean? You said the victim was shot by the killer from up above, right? I hate to break it to you, but that's not possible. Huh? Why not? Recall Mr. Deacon's body, specifically where the gunshot wounds were located. Actually, I didn't get that good of a look. Oh, well then. The bullet entered Mr. Deacon in his abdominal region and exited his right shoulder. This is more consistent with an angled shot from beneath the victim. Ugh. Then... Yes, our recreation had the vic victim being shot at an angle from above. A clear contradiction! You're discounting your own conclusions! No. This one point is the only flaw. This was the mistaken parameter in our recreation. Yes, the locations of the killer and the victim were wrong. Ah, I get it. I see what you're trying to say. I believe the killer and the victim were standing opposite to what we initially thought. It was the victim who was on top of the stage as he was being shot by the killer. happened, it would also explain the positioning of the gunshot wounds. But then what about the footprints? Since footprints don't lie, we can assume then that the killer also wore a costume. Okay, I'll try using that data instead. Badger on badger crime. Judging by the judging by the fact that both the killer and the victim were wearing costumes, I'd say it was a killing between the two kidnappers. That would be the most natural conclusion. Hmm. So they did have some kind of falling out, or one betrayed the other. You agree, Agent Lang. <laughs> well done, Mr. Prosecutor. But that alone doesn't clear Officer Meekins of the crime. Right, because he was wearing one, a costume as well. That's what you're going to say, isn't it? I ask that you take another good look at the tire marks over there. The three marks are indicative of the Blue Badger Mobile. That story Officer Meekins told about, about that shop on wheels getting stolen was just a lie. He drove the Blue Badger Mobile here and committed the murder. Then he used the car to move the body to the garage in the Wild West area. You believe he moved the body with the car? That's right. It was Officer Meekins himself who pointed us to the way he did it. The three... The, tree, the three tired tread marks are very telling. However... Is the Blue Badger Mobile the only thing capable of make, creating such a pattern? Three 
three tire marks. I have to agree the Blue Badger mo Mobile has three tires. Of course, the only thing in this park that could make those marks is that roving shop. Well, what about the pink one right next, right next door to the crime scene? Objection! Are you forgetting that there are in fact three of them? You can't simply ignore the pink and proto badger mobiles, Agent Lang. Not so fast. Of course, I didn't say it couldn't be either of the other two. But I see no reason to drag them into this just to complicate things. Hold it! Of course, you have some sort of proof that it was all a lie, correct? Of course not! Well, that was blunt. But suppose it is a lie. It would explain a lot of things. Like his movements and his whereabouts. still claim that the tire marks belong to the Blue Badger Mobile. It must have arrived on the scene after the, after the ground had become wet with rain. Officer Meekins committed the murder. Then he used the car to move the body to the garage in the Wild West area. Hold it! Besides the Blue Badger Mobile, there are other ways the body could have been moved. Not so fast! Recall what the Wild West area looked like. Only the Blue Badger Mobile and Mr. Deacon's body were in the garage. I'd say that's proof. I suppose if one were to look at that place, that would be the only logical conclusion. However, my experience tells me the truth is usually not so easily found. Is there some sort of problem with Agent Lang's statement? Looks like the only thing that car was selling was death, not dreams. Only if what Agent Lang believes turns out to be true. The three-tier three tread marks are very telling. However, is the Blue Badger Mobile the only thing capable of creating such a pattern? We saw that one photo of how we saw the... Yeah. Okay, the tires are clean. Wouldn't there... If if it was what left those tracks, wouldn't, the... wouldn't there be mud on the tires? Sorry, Agent Lang, but that's an impossible tale. And why is that? Those tire marks could not have been left by Officer Meekin's Blue Badger Mobile. One look at the car would have told you so. Again, the tires are clean. Take that! Take a good look at the tires. There's not a single dollop of mud to be found on it. No! If this car had come to the backstage area and left those tire tracks, then the lack of mud on these tires stands out as very peculiar indeed. Then how do you explain the tire tracks, genius? Hey, I've got it. What about Ms. Oldbag's Pink Badger Mobile? Don't be ridiculous! I was sleeping the entire time in the second-tier seats! 
indeed. I believe we can rule her out as someone related to the crime. However, there is yet one more roving store, as I recall. You mean the Proto Badger? That's right, there was one more parking space inside that garage. And it proves the existence of a Proto Badger mobile. That is still unaccounted for. Agent Lang, I suggest you find this Proto Badger mobile post haste. There must still be some sort of incriminating evidence in it. Huh. Hey, did you hear something? Hell. Huh? What the hell? Help me. Is that... Is that Lance? Are you alright? Well, this is something. Looks like we found our kidnapping victim. It is him. Where were you all this time? Wild West with kidnappers. He was in the room next to the one I was held in. Ran away using underground and got lost. The kidnappers. What is it? I can't understand what you're trying to say. The kidnappers escaped wearing costumes. Did you see the faces of your kidnappers? No. I didn't see their faces, but two... One was a woman. A woman? Quite important piece of testimony. Hey, what are you guys doing? Stop standing there and get your cop- Get your cops on this already. I'll even let you guys have what the kid said just now. Consider it a gift. Now, are you going to get out of my crime scene, or am I going to have to get rough? <sighs> Again? You're nothing but a big bully. Come on, Mr. Edgeworth, let's go. Oh, no, 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 not you. You're a very important witness for my case. I'm not about to let you get that way that easily. Don't count on me to testify, because I won't. Not for you. That's right, I won't either. You hear me, a young whippersnapper? Hey, calm down. There's no reason for all this hostility. I just want to take a statement from each of you. I'm not going to rough either of you up. I give you my word. Come now, fair maidens. What do you say? Will you cooperate? Fair maidens. <laughs> you little rascal. You sure know the way into a woman's heart. Lang Zi says, The passage of time is but a fleeting moment, and a lady is young forever. <laughs> Trying to outdo my edgy poo with your fancy schmancy sayings. Let's get this over with. So we're clear, I'm only interested in giving you my statement. Sure, just as soon as Mr. Prosecutor leaves us be. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth? Well, our investigation continues to turn up new info, but also more stuff developing. But this is another good break spot, so I'll see you in a few minutes.